So, hi. Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that there of course there is we are at nyc camp 2014 which is taking place at the united nations which i've it's an incredibly exciting venue how does it feel for you to be sort of in the corridors of power it's quite it's it's quite an experience i've never been in, in uh, a country within a country or a nation within a country before yeah same here i've never even been inside an embassy so it's it's quite interesting that we're actually not on u.s soil right now yeah, we got this whole briefing about how you're no longer in the United States, there's all these different rules. Yeah. Plus, it's actually fascinating just to go to the cafeteria and see pe people, I guess, from everywhere, every mm -hmm. different kind of ethnic dress, um, so many languages going on. Yeah. Plus, for me to be, as an open source person, to be in a place that is has been fundamental to knowledge sharing and trying to make the world a better place, um, it's a it's a pretty inspiring environment to f for us, right? Yeah, I think it's a great fit. So, this is Scott Reeves. He works for Digital Echidna in London, Ontario. This is Roel Pitet yeah. from Vancouver, Canada. He's a PHP freelancer. They have been hugely helpful, and thank you for your contributions. You're welcome. To getting the Drupal 8 theming layer ready. So, I think the most significant part of that is Twig, right? Would one of you like to explain what Twig is? Well, um, Twig is a templating language, uh, a templating system similar to your Smarty or your uh, uh, the other <laughs> the other bunch of them that are out there. Um, it was based off of um, uh, of the syntax that was made for uh, Python, it's called Jinja, which is like Ninja with a J. Um, and it was, yeah, it was kind of conceived from that, but then extended and, and made uh, probably one of the fastest ones as well as one of the most extensible ones that they, they have. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I think the story was was that uh, Fabien Potentier, the, the creator of the Symphony framework, which of course Drupal 8 uses a lot of Symphony components, he actually, I think he actually found Twig and sort of said, oh, I kind of like this, but I kind of want to tweak it a little bit. So I think he, the, the story is he actually took this over from someone else a number of years ago. Right, so the big story in the Drupal community for the last couple of years has been the adoption of other t open source technologies to integrate them with Drupal to make all of the projects better. And uh, Larry, it all, you know, the public kind of kickoff was Larry Garfield's blog post about getting off the island. And we've got a bunch of Symphony 2 components, all sorts of other interesting libraries. Twig is maintained by Sensio Labs, mm -hmm. the Symphony 2 company, and by Fabien Potentier. Um, do you know how the decision came that we were also going to adopt Twig along with all this other stuff that we've taken? When did the decision happen to drop PHP template, for example? I believe it was at a bad camp in 2012, if I'm not incorrect on that. Um, and it was a, just a discussion on a, a, all the different template uh, languages that are out there and which ones are faster, which ones uh, have more features, um, which ones have less features, so maybe we can have them smaller. Um, and kind of ironing that out in a big discussion, kind of round table, boff type discussion. And, that's what I remember I think, them talking about. Yeah, I think, I think in Bad Camp 2012 um, was the initial actually commit by Dries of, of the Twig integration with Core. So I'm, I, I believe there was discussion before that. There was, there was definitely other explorations. Um, there was some work that was done into a, a still PHP-based kind of token, tokenized, so that, but it would, we would still be very much on our own island of we have our own new token system and here you have to learn this now. Do you know if it played any role in the discussion that it is maintained by the same, same people who maintain the Symphony 2 framework? I, I know I've heard a lot of people sort of explain that we don't have Twig because we have Symphony. It's more that we have Twig because it's awesome. 
And Twig is actually kind of, it has its own documentation, its own website. It's 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 a separate project. It's a separate project from yeah. Symphony. Symphony uses it, and as well as lots of other. Uh, there's at least three other CMSs that I know of, but there's a, a wide variety of frameworks that allow you to integrate it. Like your Laravel has uh, an extension that I know some people, uh, Drupal people in Vancouver, are actually experimenting with some Laravel stuff, and they're also using Twig with Laravel. And that's not the native templating language for Laravel, mm -hmm. and so they're using it there too, just because. Drupal is going to be using it, so they wanted to use Twig, but they also wanted to use a framework instead of a, a, a CMS. There's so much convergence going on in the PHP world. There's so much fresh cooperation, and, and you know, the Composer standard, for example, just gives us so many incredible opportunities to work together now. Absolutely, and I know that there's been a little bit of actually the Drupal project contributing, you know, pull requests back to Twig, so. There, there is. We're already getting into that that commingling of the two projects a little bit, you know. So, it's really, it's really promising to the future and what we can do together. So, Drupal eight has adopted this templating system because there are a lot of advantages to using it. Right. Uh, one advantage is not homegrown, so we don't have to maintain the whole thing. Can you talk about how it might improve? Your work at your digital agency as a you're a, actually a back end developer, right? That's right. Uh, well, a lot of the work I do in my day job, uh, a decent portion enough, is is actually sort of bridging the gap between the back end and the front end. And I think Twig really helps us there because it actually brings more power to both. Uh, front end people who don't want to learn PHP can look at something that looks a lot more like HTML. It looks like more what they know. It's it's one less thing they need to learn because front end developers already have to know a lot, you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all these different what do, what these different browsers do with these different things. So it gives a lot more power to front end developers, and it also gives some really cool power and toys to back end developers because Twig's very extensible, and we we've been very careful integrating Twig into Drupal to not do anything that people who already know Twig that it would mess them up. So we're basically, we're adding a few Drupal specific things to Twig, but that's about it. So we're trying not to change the experience too much. That's great. I wasn't actually